Hello YouTubers. I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Gear. And I hope that you're subscribing and following the videos as I often build one on top of the other. Alright, well the last time uh, we looked at four different amps in stereo and I really like the Fender Deluxe Reverb. I thought, man, that's an awesome guitar sound. Now, here's the thing. I run two uh, Deluxe Reverbs in stereo and a crossover with a bass amp. And the problem was, I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to be using that, I want it to be as quiet as possible, right? And I wasn't getting that. I was getting a, a really bothersome kind of a, a hum, if you like, out of the uh, bass amp, right? It was terrible, terrible sounding. Well, and then out of the Fender Deluxe Reverbs, I was getting this hiss, horrible hiss, and I was going, man, you know, um, this isn't what I was signed up for, basically. Well, I think I've solved those problems, and I'll tell you what they were. Uh, first, for the bass amp, coming out of the crossover box into the, the PA, right, which is supposed to be really quiet, but I was getting this hum. Well, it turns out the cable was faulty. It was an old cable. So I replaced the cable, and man, the hum just disappeared. Well, that's good news. Now, here's the other thing. Was the hum, or I'm sorry, the hiss from the deluxe reverbs. And I was going, man, what is this? I mean, when I played... stop playing I hear this hiss and I'm quite surprised you know what it was part of it is the way the deluxe reverb is kind of designed it has two channels right a normal channel and then the channel with the reverb and so on well as it turns out um, even though I wasn't using the first channel the normal channel at all. I was using the second channel. Um, it turns out, one time when I walked by, I don't know how this happened, but the volume on the first channel, the normal channel, even though it wasn't being used at all, was turned up to 10. Right? Full blast. And this was causing this hiss to come through even though I wasn't using that channel, I was using the, the second channel, right? So I turned it down to one and guess what? The hiss is gone. I mean, you can hear it here. is essential, at least for recording and things, you know. Um, now here's another thing that I discovered. And that is for reverb, right? I had been using the Specular Tempest, which is a beast of a reverb pedal. Recently, um, I've been using the Eventide H9 pedal, right? And 
as it turns out, it has my favorite delay in there, which is really a time factor, Eventide time factor. It's built into the H9. However, the H9 has some other surprises, and that is the reverb. So I connected it, and just out of a hunch, you know, I tried a reverb setting, and check this out. And I, I think it's really great. And the reason is, um, while the um, Specular Tempest, you know, is a huge sound, with a huge decay, um, now here's the Eventide. Check this out. It's amazing. Basically, it still keeps that huge amp sound, um, but it's not quite as dry, you know, as not having it at all, you know. So I really am liking the sound. Whereas the Eventide, or I'm sorry, the Specular Tempest, the reverb on it, I mean, I love the Specular Tempest, don't get me wrong, but it has a, such a huge decay, you know, that sometimes um, that's not the sound you're going after. All right, so here's just one setting of the Specular Tempest. Echo. 
Whereas with the Eventide, guitar amp and everything but with two different reverbs and they really are different one has a really long decay and one has a much shorter decay and brings out more of the amp sound right and I find them both useful depending on what sound I'm going for so I'm really pleased uh, with the uh, two deluxe reverbs, you know. Um, I suppose I could use a noise reduction pedal or something like that. But it's quiet enough that it's not a terrible nuisance, you know. Uh, so those were big discoveries for me, all of those. You know, and uh, this is what I also want to mention is that um, I tried out, for example, this, uh, let me see if I can grab that here. Um, Boss DD200 delay, you know, just to try something different. And, I mean, this pedal's really cool sounding. It actually has a looper built in. In any case, what I discovered is that, um, and maybe I'm just not used to it or what have you, but um, well, I prefer the delay on the um, H9, right? 
for the delay, which is why I brought it out in the first place, not realizing what a difference the reverb would make as well. Um, it just happens this way that what I discover is when I'm putting together a pedal board, you know, deciding which pedals to use, there are some pedals that just um, are, I don't know, more intuitive to to your playing or to your setup and so on. Right? Something that you're familiar with and um, that you get that sound, you know. Um, I tried to repeat on here and, and couldn't really get it to be quite the same, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, really, compared to the H9. So, but, I mean, it's fun to use, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it has some really cool sounds in it. But, as far as my pedal board goes, that, with the addition of the reverb, well, it's a no-brainer that the H9 is really great. And, I still love the Specular Tempest. Because I always love that kind of a reverb sound, but more of a, a reverb mixed with an echo. You know, which the Specular Tempest does extremely well. And I couldn't get that sound out of the H9. However, I don't always want that sound, you know. I want something more compact, uh, where the reverb is not quite as overwhelming. You know, the huge echo and things. So the H9 does a really great job. So I'm pretty pleased. You know, I'm going to work on the, you know, I still hear a little bit of sound or noise, if you like, out of the deluxe reverb and, and the bass amp. And it's probably cables, you know. The cables I use are old and ratty, so. But I'm really pleased with the, uh, yeah, the H9 is so cool. <laughs> struggling with the DD200, the boss delay pedal, you know. I mean, I was getting the sounds that I liked, but it was taking quite a bit of time, you know. Whereas the uh, Eventide was just no-brainer. All right. So anyway, these are things I've been working on, you know. Um, 
Yeah, I can still hear a little hum. You know, and part of that could be my pedal board or the cables and things. We'll see. Alright. Now, one last thing I wanted to talk about, and this is just uh, something I ran across that I found really amazing. And that is, about the time that uh, I released my first album, I think it was 1999, between 1997 and 1999, and I'd read about this guitarist, right? And it was Michael Hedges, right? I say, man, he's pretty good guitarist, right? Well, discovered that Michael Hedges um, was a freaking beast on acoustic guitar. And you know, today you see a lot of guitarists, acoustic guitarists, and they're kind of slapping the guitar, you know, making noises, hitting harmonics and things. Well, all that stuff, it was Michael Hedges. And I mean, he had really mastered that. Um, and um, from what I understand, he actually comes from Oklahoma, of all places, right? And he went to a music school, and then even went to a, um, I think it was an Ivy League music school, Princeton, I think it was. In any case, from what he says, or said anyway, he said he moved to California, got discovered, right, by a music label called Wyndham Hill, right, and Wyndham Hill is kind of like earthy kind of new age label type stuff, and in fact, uh, the reason he got signed was he, he was friends with Will Ackerman, who was an acoustic guitarist, kind of a pinker pinker guitarist, really good too. Uh, and so, in any case, he got signed to Win the Mill, and he created an album, which I think is a real classic, and any guitarist. Uh, should have a copy of it. It's just fantastic. It's called Aerial Boundaries. Now, Michael Hedges was known to uh, play the harp guitar, right, acoustic guitar, with bass strings on the bottom, right? So he'd be playing acoustic and then all of a sudden hit these bass strings. And in fact, the song Aerial Boundaries was kind of known for that on a harp guitar. However, I will say that I've seen videos of Michael Hedges playing Aerial Boundaries on a six string acoustic. Right? Sounded just like it. So he didn't necessarily need that harp guitar. And I think what is really neat is that there's tons of videos of Michael Hedges on YouTube. And I urge you to go and take a look at some of these. They're really amazing. And I think one of the best ones is, uh, or one of the most interesting ones, I guess, is it was his first uh, kind of guitar clinic, right? It was given at a high school. And during that clinic, he says, man, I just bought this guitar yesterday, and, and I, I, you know, I haven't even taken it out of the case, but I want to show it to you, right? And so he pulls out, guess what? His black uh, 1913, made in 1913, harp guitar, right? Which he ended up playing for a long time. And it's actually, I just saw that it's um, in a museum now, right? And there's a little rattle snake, you know, the rattle part of the rattlesnake, 
is on the guitar. He put it on the guitar for some reason. So anyway, it's still there. And uh, so Aerial Boundaries, uh, Windham Hill, is an album really amazing and has some of his most famous songs, if you like. And there's tons of videos on YouTube of him playing these songs live, you know. And it's quite something to witness, really. You know, uh, just really interesting. Now, later on, he came out with an album called Tap Root, right? And it has um, him kind of singing songs. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, he'll pull out something amazing, an amazing instrumental track, you know. So it's worth listening to as well. Anyway, sadly, uh, for those who don't know, um, Michael Hedges, uh, he died at the age of 43 in a um, car accident. And from what I understand, um, he was driving along and hit a patch of black ice and kind of skidded off the, the road and, I mean, the car, like, fell 120 feet, ejecting Michael Hedges. And, sadly, he wasn't found for, like, two or three days later or something like that. In any case, what a loss. Man. Because he was really something special, really. You know, uh, I think not only his technique, right, but his songs as well. In fact, during one of these seminars and things, he says, you know, I'm not really this technical guitarist, I'm more of a music composer. Go figure. And, I mean, when you listen to his things, you go, wow. It's a humbling experience, let's put it that way. Anyway, I just thought it was really interesting <coughs> that on YouTube there's a really a chronological list of videos of him playing live. And uh, I think there's one concert where he does play a lot of his hits, if you like. And it was like two weeks before he died. And what's strange is that he had shaved his head very bizarre. But in any case, uh, his playing is exceptional. Alright, just wanted to share that with you. So if you're not familiar with Michael Hedges, check him out. You know, for acoustic guitar. Uh, it's quite a humbling experience, though, I'll tell you that. You know? Uh, yeah, I certainly didn't pick up the acoustic guitar for quite a while after witnessing that, you know. And I was a big fan, a big fan of him from the Aerial Boundaries album, which is still a classic of classic, you know. Man, it just has some really great songs. All right, very good. Um, and then also there's a story, the Michael Hedges story, that the guitar that he recorded Aerial Boundaries on, unfortunately, was stolen out of his van and it disappeared. And then, ten years later, you know, a woman comes up and says, Man, I may have your guitar or know where it's at. And he got that guitar back, which is quite amazing, too. In any case, I urge you to check out the Michael Hedges um, YouTube videos, um, especially I think in the, one of the titles is um, "Concert Last Two Weeks." You know, it's basically two weeks before he died, he gave a concert. It's really great. I mean, the playing is just phenomenal. Alright, very good. Uh, I'll see you next time.